In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how you're going to be reading an instrument, whether it's a, a metric ruler or maybe a graduate cylinder, and try to figure out what certain and uncertain digits are in those particular measured numbers. So a certain digit is actually going to be a reading that directly comes off the instrument. There is usually no doubt about the certain digits, and everyone agrees on their uh, about their accuracy. When it comes to uncertain digits, it's more like a guess based on the position of uh, the line, like in this example on, on the ruler. And uh, though those are doubtful, and everyone will have a different estimate, or most of the people will have a different estimations or different uncertain digits, um, because they will be looking at the instrument a little bit differently than the other one. Usually, a very last sig fig in, in an measure number is going to be an estimated digit or an uncertain digit. So let's take uh, this example. So suppose I'm trying to measure the length of this line. So we got to have this line drawn already. And uh, suppose it's starting at the zero, so in both of those rulers. And it ends at uh, this point where I have this vertical green line. And uh, I have drawn this vertical green line on both of those uh, rulers just to kind of make sure where uh, we can easily see where it's, uh, it's uh, going to be at the rulers. So when I'm reading from the first ruler, what would be the reading? So before we actually go ahead and read it, just look at what the difference is between the first ruler and the second ruler. So the first ruler has uh, 0 all the way to the 8 and so does the second ruler so they are actually measuring centimeters so we have uh, 0 to 8 centimeters in the first ruler and the same story we got 0 to 8 centimeters in the second ruler however in between each centimeters in the first ruler I have 10 small markings in between the centimeters and that actually makes the that actually measures the millimeters so another way of saying uh, the smallest marking you can or smallest measurement you can take in a in the first ruler is going to be the millimeters or it's going to be the tenth of the centimeters all right so i can measure up to 0.1 in this uh 0.1 centimeters in this particular first ruler However, in the second ruler, we don't have that luxury where it only measures the centimeters, so it does not really measure the millimeters or the tenth of the centimeters. Okay, so when I'm reading off the first ruler, I know the line is after five, so it's going to be five. Okay, and then I know this ruler can actually measure the tenth of the or the first decimal of this after the centimeters. So the first decimal, you can kind of clearly see, and everyone is going to be agreeing on it, that it's this green line is right after the very first small marking you have after five here. So it's going to be clearly 5.1. So remember, this point one is actually coming from the instrument in this particular case. Uh, so everyone is going to agreeing on that. So that's still in a certain digit. So this five and one is in a certain digit. But then you must have an estimated digit in every single measurement, and their estimated digit must come from your mind. So I can say it's a little bit over 0.1, so that means someone might say it's going to be 5.12 centimeters, but then this last digit that I just have, it's going to be an estimated digit, so someone may not agree that it's actually at 0 0.02 position, but they may say it's 5.11. So this estimated digit could be different for different people, and that's completely okay. All right, and uh, more digits or more sig figs you have in a given number, uh, greater accuracy you're going to have for that measured number. Now, let's look at what's going on with the second one. So when I'm measuring the second one, I know it's a little bit after 5, but then I don't have any any small markings in there so it really cannot measure the millimeters or the tenth of the centimeters so what that really means I'm gonna have to take an estimate guess and be like okay where this gonna be alright I could say it's gonna be at the 
0.1 centimeters, so I can say it's uh, 5.1 centimeters, or someone may come and say it's actually not at uh, one, maybe it's at two, or it's 5.2 centimeters, which is completely okay. So in this particular case, this tenth position, or right after the decimal, is actually going to be your estimated digit. So you can clearly see how the estimated digits are different in those two different rulers. If you are if you're already measuring the tenth of the centimeters or the millimeters, then you'll have at the hundredth place you will be having your estimated digit. But if you're not, then at the tenth place you will have your estimated digit. So that's that's how you're going to be reading those rulers. Um, Make sure you always read everything off the instrument and then you should have one extra digit coming from your mind and that's going to be your estimated digit. And that's going to be the case for everything like whether you uh, reading a beam balance or maybe reading off uh, the volume from a graduate cylinder and everything. Okay, let's take another example where I have these two graduate cylinders. Let's call that one and two. So before we do anything, let's see what the difference is between those two gradual cylinders. Uh, both of them measures milliliters, so this is going to be measuring milliliters, and that's also going to be measuring milliliters. But between uh, this first and second one, the first one also have these 10 small lines between the milliliters. And uh, for the sake of keeping things simple, I just have drawn those 10 small lines between the 2 and 3 because that's where our liquid is. And um, as a result, we this first one will be actually measuring 0.1 milliliters. Uh, so maybe another way of saying the tenth of the position of the milliliters, uh, just straight off the instrument. But you're not getting that uh, type of accuracy from this uh, second graduate cylinder. Now, when you pour the liquid into a a graduate cylinder, like in this case you always read the lower meniscus. So when you're reading the lower meniscus, what's the vo value going to be for this one? Let's say, obviously, it's going to be 2. Okay, so that's going to be 2 milliliters, but then obviously I know we can also read the tenth of the milliliters from this instrument. And when I count it, so obviously this is going to be 5 right there, and then you have 6 and 7. So this uh, big reading, right? this uh, line is actually between seven and eight all right so I would everyone is going to agree that it's going to be six right so that's going to be six but since this is between or rather seven my bad here it's between seven and eight actually so this is going to be that one is going to be six that one is going to be seven and that one is going to be eight so it's between seven and eight so everyone agrees it's actually going to be 2.7 all right, so it seems like it's in between seven and eight, and that's where your estimation comes in. And uh, some people might say it's 2.75, which is right in the middle, milliliters. Or someone might say it's not 2.75, but rather it's 2.76 milliliters. Or someone might say it's 2.74 milliliters, and that's completely okay. Now, the inch, the reading that comes directly off the uh, this um, gradual cylinder, there are going to be your certain digits, like 2 and 7 in every single reading is going to be certain digit. This 4, 5, and 6 are going to be your estimations there. So those are your estimations in this particular case. Okay, so then what's going on with the second cylinder? Well, the second cylinder doesn't really measure the tenth of the milliliters, so what that really means uh, I would have to kind of guess where this reading is between 2 and 3, or where this line is between 2 and 3. And someone might say it's actually 2.7, someone might say it's 2.6, and if someone is looking at an, uh, on an odd angle, they may say it's 2.8. So this last digit here is going to be obviously the estimation there, and 2 here is going to be the certain digit. So you can kind of clearly see how not having uh, a precise tool will change the readings. Like as saying something having 2.7 or something having 2.75 actually does make a big difference because uh, the very last digit is going to be an estimation. And if you do say that my reading is 2.5, let's say two centimeters or milliliters in this particular case, 
this 5 being an estimate, someone could say it might be actually 2.9 or it might be actually 2.1. So that does make a big difference in the reading. But if someone used this first cylinder and have 2.57 milliliters as your reading, then this 7 would be your estimation. So someone can be like, okay, it might be 2.58 or it might be 2.51. And even have changing those estimated numbers, estimated digits, it doesn't really change the magnitude of this overall measurements much. However, when you have less number of sig figs, it will change the overall magnitude of the number. So keep in mind, more sig figs you have, the better you are in terms of getting the accurate, accurate values. Okay, well, let's talk about what an accuracy and uh, precision means. So when you're trying to get in a data or trying to measure the length or the height or the weight or the volume of something you have to kind of you have to be able to compare to the true value if you have the true value and if your data is close to the true value that's when it's going to be accurate and like i said earlier if you have more sig, fig, sig figs that usually reflect greater accuracy on the other hand, the precise means how close your data sets are among one another. So like, let's say I'm trying to measure the length of a table and I measure the length of that table five times. And every single time, if, I, if the length of the table comes out to be close to one another, that's when you say it's gonna be precise. The precision doesn't really have to do anything with the true value. It's more likely how close your data sets are. Okay, so let's take a couple of these examples to kind of clarify what accuracy and precise really mean. So suppose I have three students measuring the length of the table to be 3.76 meters, 3.78 meters, and 3.75 meters. So you kind of clearly see they are only differing by the estimated digit. And if they're only differing by estimated digit, that means they are very close to one another. Okay. Uh, so since they are very close to one another, we can say they're going to be precise. Now the next question is, are they going to be accurate or no? Well, to classify a given data set or a given reading to be accurate, you have to have a true value. And uh, the length of the table, the actual length of the table or the true value for the length of the table is not given to us. So we really can't say whether this data is accurate or not accurate. We just don't have enough information. However, it is precise, however, okay? Um, let's look at the second one. Suppose a student measures the height of the ceilings to be 10.3 feet and the height given by the contractor is 10.2 feet, okay? So, you know, if someone made it or the contractor made it in this particular case and uh, he know what the, he had the actual or the true height of the ceiling, which is 10.2. So this is gonna be the true value. Okay, so if you have the true value and the measurement taken by the student is 10.3, and it is actually close to the true value. Okay, since it's close to the true value, we can clearly say it's an accurate measurement. Okay, however, can we say it's precise? Well, the, for something to be precise, you have to have multiple data sets. Or another way of saying, I would have to have this student measure the height of the ceiling multiple times or maybe at least two times or maybe have at least two students or more measure the height you know so that you can have multiple data sets so since it has only one data set you cannot say it's precise you have to have multiple data sets to consider something to be precise so sometimes the you see those kind of questions uh, they are like a little bit tricky where you know, it's gonna be either only precise or only accurate and you don't really know about the other part, whether um, it could be an accurate or precise. Like in first example, you wouldn't know if it's accurate or not. In the second example, you, you say it's, you don't know if it's precise or not because you only have one data set. 
Well, let's take an example where you have actually both of those. So suppose you have these three students measuring the weight of this balloon to be 2.4 milligrams, 2.5 milligrams, and 2.3 milligrams, and the actual weight of the balloon is given by the manufacturer is 2.5 milligrams. Okay, so we know the true value. Okay, and uh, we have three data sets. And three data sets, they are actually close to one another. Okay, and they're also actually close to the true value. Okay, so since they are close to one another, we can say they are going to be precise. And since they are close to the true value, we can say they are also going to be, they're going to be an accurate set measurement as well. So this particular example, this given data set is going to be both precise and accurate. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave in comments. In